Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive IV Club. We're in Vegas Pro 19, and today we're going to talk about the warp flow transition or a morph effect. So, uh, I've talked about this transition before. Here is a pretty crappy picture from the Santa Claus, but if you remember the scene where his beard grows in, that is a warp flow transition. Um, but this is going to be. Uh, a very bad example. So I've got a bad example about how to do it, a better example, and another better example about different things you might run into when you're trying to do a morph flow, uh, morph kind of effect. Um, and we're doing it with pictures because uh, when you do it, uh, we'll talk about it more, but you're a lot of times having an isolated subject and um, more control over over where those subjects are in position is important. You can do it with video, but if you're morphing one video into another video, you have to follow a lot of these principles. So first off, um, this one's not going to work well, and and we'll talk about all the reasons why, and these are all things you should stay away from. All right, first off, these are low resolutions. Second, the aspect ratios don't match. Uh, and if you watch me trying to do the warp flow effect, you'll notice a problem. See? <laughs> his eyes like glow and then disappear if you look to there's like lines where it's like morphing the edge of the frame into the line these are all things to uh, keep in mind when you're doing a warp flow effect um, and this one I've moved to had to move them around though for the next principle we're going to talk about so uh, if you do a warp flow effect this one's going to look a fair bit better um, when you see it happen you'll notice a few things that was probably the best I could get as far as like my face goes. Um, but you'll still notice that there's a warping of the outside. Uh, and there's ways we can fix that. I'm about to talk about that in a second. But the best way to get a good warp flow effect is to line up your subject's eyes. If you're doing eyes. If it's a building, you need to line up any kind. There's a key focus area. When you look at a person, you look at their eyes. If you look at a building, you might look at a prominent feature or something. But you need to line up kind of the features that are going to change the least and match the most. And when you line those up, that'll give you a good warp flow effect. So let's talk about how to apply it. So let's grab these two medias first. I'm going to grab this picture and I'm going to grab this first line here and we're going to create the workflow effect so uh, when you push two things together you get a transition uh, this isn't going to work right there's going to be some problems with this let's talk about that so when you go to your transitions tab if you scroll all the way down to the workflow and grab it and drop it on your cross effect you're going to have something like this happen and that's not what you want right <laughs> so um, the next step is you need to go to your event pan crop and you need to, uh, we're going to unsync this so that way I'm not creating a bunch of motion, I mean a uh, bunch of keyframes. Uh, we're going to put this above it so I can see in the track above it so I can see what's going on and I'm going to lower the opacity and then I'm going to line up the eyes. The more I can line them up, the better. All right, and then I'm gonna bring it back down. We have the transition again, so now let's watch. Better, that one was better. But something's still off about the eyes. So let me try to bring the eyes a little, a little bit lower. Another thing that helps is making sure your media matches. So this is like a square, let's make this a rectangle. Sixteen by nine. Now that's kind of scary looking already. Okay, so all right, so we've got the warp flow working, but it's still kind of off. And one, because we're going from no background to a background, and that's something I'm going to talk about in a second. And then second off, um, let's give it longer. The longer you give your warp flow time to do, and that's why with video you have to like really plan this out because with a picture you can just stretch it forever, but with a video, you can't. So the more time you give your warp flow, 
the more it's going to feel like it's actually morphing and not um, not just kind of like going whoop between pictures. All right, so now that we've got everything lined up, this warp flow looks pretty good, but you still see some of the edges and things warping, and really it's best to have isolated subjects. Another reason why doing it with video is possible, but extremely difficult. Uh, difficult to get it the way you want to get it. So um, we're gonna help myself out a little bit. We're gonna do a couple of tricks, because this is the best morph uh, I could find between me and a lion. The more similar the things are, the easier the morph is going to be. And the better lined up things can be, the easier morph is gonna be, or whatever. So uh, this uh, right here, we need to get rid of that background. So let's grab the Bayesian mask, drop it here on this one. Uh, so Bayesian masking is just an effect over here. So we're going to add a Bayesian mask. We're going to kind of just make it just kind of center on the lion's face. And we're going to give it a little bit of feathering all right now let's watch it all right much better um, maybe I could go a little heavier or lighter on the feathering so you can see what the feathering does here during the morph transition as it brings in more black that has to be morphed right in the middle of the frame. Um, but it certainly helps keep it from just looking like a little, you know, a lion picture stamped on my face. One way to help this out as well is what we can do is grab this picture, hit control to copy, let's remove, and then it keeps all the keyframes too. When we do a copy, let's uh, remove the fade here. There it is. Grab that, get rid of it. All right, and let's put it underneath the lion. All right, that works pretty good, um, but what we also need, my ear never really disappears. Reline that up, see what happens. All right, let's go to Bayesian masking again. All right, now we've got a good cookie cut and a good warp flow. And the last thing we need to do is just kind of cut off the rest of my head here in this background. So uh, we're gonna go back to Bayesian mask and throw it on the background image. Uh, and we're gonna look right here and see what we keep in. Let's just do this, let's just keep in that. All right, so obviously the more time you spend on it the more time you're masking the more time your image matching the the more planning you have the better this can be but this should demonstrate a lot of the primary principles that come into a morph effect and how you can use them so thank you so much for watching like if this video helped you out subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one remember the morph effect is called the warp flow transition see you guys next time